Hey, how's it going for like? It's me. I'm back again for another exciting installment of Pro Vlog. Last time we were setting up getting ready to mount the RB26 into the chassis with the new engine mounts. Now I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what I'm expecting to achieve with this. So, this is a wet sump engine. I am worried about ground clearance with the sump. Also, I want to get the engine in a more central position. The only important measurement I really need is a centre line between the nose of the crank, the back of the gearbox and the diff, I want a straight line. I want to get the engine as low as I can without the sump scraping on the ground. If it was a dry sump engine I could slam the thing right down and it would fit a lot better into the car but I'm going to have to sacrifice a little bit. Also I want to get the right centralisation so that I can take the gearbox out without having to move the engine mounts. Before the old style engine mounts, I could loosen them, the engine kind of tipped back at the rear of the engine, I could slide the gearbox off. With this, I don't want to have to move the engine, I just want to be able to slide the gearbox right off in case I have to get in the back to the clutch at a competition. So, what I've been doing is I've spent the last couple of weekends, couple of weekends, yeah, farting about with trying to get the engine centralised. And I thought I was being really smart using a level on top of the engine, but I'll, I'll come and I'll show you. So I thought I was being really smart and I was leveling it down here, as you can see, is not leveled. But if you actually stop being an arsehole and take a step back and look underneath, you can see that the sump, the bottom of the sump, is actually level, whereas the top isn't. So, I'm happy with that, and how I've went about levelling the engine and setting it is I found the lowest point at the bottom of these here, you see that, across the bottom of the arms there, and the sump sits a little bit almost level with that. I don't know if you can see that. You can't really see it very well, but trust me, it's it's basically level with the bottom of the car. Unfortunately, it does sit a little bit lower than the subframe, but um, having to have a bit of compromise here, there's nothing I can really do about that. If you look around here, you can kind of see that there is a little bit of clearance between the firewall and I should be able to get the gearbox out past the transmission tunnel and the engine mounts are going to line up pretty well and I think they're going to miss I think they're going to miss any important parts. I'll have to try on the manifold and that once I get them tacked. I know what you're saying, I know what you're thinking. Should have lifted the car a little bit higher on the axle stands. I wish I had a engine, a car lift, a car lift would have been good for this. See, you're doing this yourself, but invest in a car lift. I'm getting too old for this, right. So we'll get underneath the car, have a look, see what I'm doing down here. I've got an illumination here, there we go, magnetic one goes up there, right. Now, because I've been a genius and went and cut off the existing mounts, 
you can't actually see where the old mounts used to be. So how I'm lining this up is I've got my arm from a shifter and it needs to be about 40mm down which I think is going to sit about there. I think that's going to work out and maybe enough to shorten it a bit or lengthen it depending where I'm putting the new shifter. You can see that I've got clearance that side and I've got clearance this side but it's not lined up yet so don't get over excited with yourself it's not lined up yet. Now for the mounts we're taking a straight line across here and I think that will be okay. I'm gonna have to make quite a big mount here. But uh, if you take a line across there, I think that is gonna be perfect. So, my laser alignment tool set up off the back of the car, running a straight line along the diff. Ideally, it should be from the front of the car, but if you had an engine, a car engine keeps it an engine. If you had a car lift, you could have a car higher and you could run a straight line from the crankshaft through gearbox, through the diff. But I'm just doing this in the floor of my garage, so it is not quite like that. But I've done a lot of measurements. I am almost happy. I ended up lowering the engine a little bit because my goal here was always to have the engine a tiny bit lower than it was previously. It just means that the sump is very, very close to the bottom of the car, but there's not much I can do about that uh, other than go to a dry sump. Hey, PRP, if you're listening, you know, Stu's a big fan of your stuff, so if you want to send me a dry sump kit, I will install it. Yeah, because I've got all the time in the world to finish this build, you know. So, here we are. Clearance at this side is lots. I mean, Look at the amount of clearance you got there. Unfortunately, at this side, it is somewhat lagging. Yeah, over there. It will go past, but it's bloody tight. Well, I'm not worried about that. It should be okay. Sump is uh, there. Under here, we have laser and laser. There and there. I'm starting to tear my hair out a bit doing this. Uh, I, I was whole afternoon last weekend trying to get this right and I just couldn't get it. I ended up running this beam across and a little strap from the intake to lift it up to get it sitting level. So I'm happy with that now. Right, so I've jumped ahead a little bit here. I've already taken the engine, the gearbox back out of the car and done the welding. Uh, I just tried to crack on with this to get it finished off because uh, to be honest it was about a bit of a the arse job but we got there got there in the end. So when I did the laser alignment from the diff side I wasn't fully 100% happy with how the engine was lying. I thought the engine was still lying slightly to the side. So I ended up doing an old fashioned way and running a string and I think we ended up with a better result with the string to be honest. Uh, again if you're doing this I'd recommend doing it higher up on a maybe in a car lift then you can run the laser right way across without anything but Difficult because I needed to support the engine with the underneath the sump at the front to get it positioned. So the first thing I had to do once I got everything lined up was fabricate the engine mounts and tack them in place. Uh, this was handy because it kept the engine in place and could allow me to go on to doing the gearbox mount.
For the gearbox mount, I cut out a plate of 6mm steel and roughly shaped it to where I thought it had to be. Drilled out the holes and mounted it onto the back of the gearbox. From there I was able to fabricate the mounting positions onto the chassis and tack them into place. Then, of course, when I was happy with all that and fabricated the gearbox mount, I could then take the engine and the gearbox back out and finish welding everything back together. I put the cross member for the gearbox back in and tightened it up to hopefully stop the mounts from flexing out of place when I welded it. So we will see when we go to put the engine back in if she still bloody fits. The one thing I was going to do that I haven't done is I was going to try the turbo manifold and the turbo on to make sure that all fits, but uh, I got a bit carried away with myself and wanted it all welded. I wanted to finish this job so I pulled it out and welded it, so fingers crossed, fingers crossed everything is okay. Alright, so here is my gearbox cross member that we fabricated. I'm real happy with how that came out, I think that's going to be real good. And here is our engine mounts, the one with the aluminium side and the one with the polybush side. They'll need a blast and a paint and they should be good to go I hope. Yeah, I'm real, real happy with that. One thing I will correct is that uh, when you see me lining up uh, the, the sump at the bottom of the car, the sump's actually hanging a bit lower. When I took the load off it, the car was hanging, the sump's hanging a little bit low. So I have lifted it up a tiny bit. I was a bit worried that uh, the engine was sitting a bit high before I did all this, but I, I don't see how the engine can sit any lower going by where the gearbox is sitting in relation to the bottom of the chassis legs and that. So. I'm happy with the engine position at the moment. Right, I think that's enough for this episode. Thank you very much for watching this far and thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, the last video I did was about, I did a few interviews with Steve McConnell and Paul Alford and also the Crimin video which got received very well. Hopefully I'll do some more of those videos through the year. And uh, yeah, we're getting there, it's just taking a bit of time, a lot more time than I thought. But uh, it's, it's a colossal amount of work I've left for myself. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed we'll get there. And, uh, yeah, we've got some interesting things coming. We've got uh, Group D front, modular front end going on the car. Group D firewall. And, of course, uh, some other work. We're going to be putting the pedal box into the car. So stay tuned. I'm going to try and keep these videos going. And, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.